Right. Right, everyone. So, this is the famous Cambridge Cottage. So there you can see what I meant about the contours being looking as if it's all over the place, but it's quite flat, but you'll get high butts. So the 50 mil um, will show up and you can go down to 20 mil. I've done even surveys where they show five and 10 mil contours for flooding issues. So it can get quite involved. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to pull out, I've got nails, um, survey nails in here. There's one there. Do you see a little hilty nail? And that's what a surveyor will bang in so that he can um, put his instrument on it. Yeah, there. All right. Um, and you get slightly larger ones. That's there. Um, and that's a known point, so I'll know exactly the coordinates and the height of that. And it'll be relative to either the floor level or GPS or whatever. So I can come back in and use that and extend the survey. And I have more than one I've got probably one, two, three, four, 10, 15 around here. So if I lose one or two of them, I can also resurrect my survey or check or put more stuff. So first thing I'm going to do is I've got another nail up there. I'm going to pull a tape from there through to the nail over there. And you'll have a distance on your, on your sheets of paper. And it should be 24.89 or thereabouts. So, and what I'm going to do is bang in another little nail behind it so I can hook on the tape. All right, and you need to be careful because some tapes don't start at zero. They start a little bit in, all right? Yes, they're in yellow. Is it marked on here? It's there, that little oh, triangle. Station F, 5.324. The one we saw there was station E. Right. A level of 5.336, is it? Okay. All right. Where is it? Mm. Where is it? You looking for the uh, nail? A little nail, yeah. Tessa, come on. Sorry? We need to find the nail. I know, nail I'm head. looking for it. Look. It could have been nicked out. Yeah, yes. David's been here, he's going to take them all out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there it is, got it. Yeah. So if I straighten that up, right, and then pull it fairly tight, I'll get 24.914. So what have I got in my plan? 24.89. So, what do you make it? Nah, 24912, something like that. 2491. Yeah. Alright, okay. 24.91 you had, is that what you said? Yeah, you did. 89, yeah. yeah. So it's two, three centimetres different, right? I had to re establish that one. It's gone over a hill, so I've done it without any bumps. There's a steel, um, what's called a a spring balance that you'd put to get nine pounds of pull on the tape and that's what we used to do in the old days and this is all we had you used to pull the tape as hard as you well not as hard as you could but a certain uh, pull behind it the guy at the other end used to call what's known as slip banding he wouldn't hold it on zero he would hold it on 
point one, point one five, point two, anything, but it wouldn't tell me. He'd write down three readings, and I would measure the three points at this. And when he takes his distances from my distances, you should end up with the correct distance, all right? But with my instrument, which is looking at everything on the level plane, it's much more accurate, all right? So whoever's got the other ones now, you've got offsets. So I have taken a point at whatever it is along there, 15 metres along there, and taken a distance into the corner of the window at 7.62. Yeah. And then I've taken another one at five metres and gone into the same point in the window. So we want to check them with the tapes that I've got there. All right? And see if they're good. So while I bang in another nail over there and pull in another chain line, if you or some of you can try and see if my distances on here are correct, basically. Yeah, so you go along here at 15 metres. Oh, and the wind's got it. So again, you would have something on there that would hold it down. So you pull it through to online again. There's 14 meters there. So you're 15 meters. So if somebody goes and holds it on the nail, gets it straight, you can measure from 15 meters into the corner, go to the other point into the corner, you've got three distances, which means that that point's not going to move. And you build up your survey with all these triangles between known points, all right? So what I want you to do is go through, a couple of years, go through what the dim dimensions on there. And I, I've got a chain and offset, which is known as a tape and offset. So I've come along uh, 8.83, come off at 90 degrees, and gone into that corner on the window over there at 4.47. So that can be checked as well. So if you grab some of these tapes here, Right? A couple of more types. Um, and this, this is the spring balance. So if you hold this, this, there's a little roller ball that goes on the end of the type, and you pull it till you get nine kilograms. And you try it, it's quite hard. So that keeps the tape straight. If it's above something, you get what's known as a catenary, where the tape bends. And if you use this amount of pressure over the type, you can calculate for that catenary over the distance. So it's all mathematics. So you can actually get it. Well, because it's got a little roller ball on it. Right, so if I... This is if you want to do stuff accurately. So if I get that in there, that ball should roll, and then when I pull it tight, the ball will roll up the tape, or it should do and it holds it tight, locks it, all right? But obviously this is slider because the old tapes we had um, had lines on them, but that's the idea, and that's what you used to use. So that is, um, that's called, uh, that's a spring balance, basically, for weighing things. But if you want to do stuff really accurately, you would use one of them. Do your baseline, so bang in nails or pegs, measure that accurately, then you can start measuring offsets to your detail and doing the triangles everywhere. And you can take triangles from anything to anything. And as long as you build up more and more known points, you end up creating a mesh over the whole lot and it becomes very accurately. But you can apply them techniques to any survey that you get. As I say, I've got this. The, your, the survey company would give you it in 3D, uh, 2D and 3D and digital drawings. So you can actually interrogate and just pull off distances like this and go along with a couple of types and check it. All right, so I'll, I'll bang in one, pull a tape across, then I'll show you how to use these other things, which gives you 90 degrees, because it's quite easy to get 90 degrees off of here. Because all you're doing, basically, is trying to get the 90 degree, and that's 90 degree, right? That's not, and neither is that. So you can offset. Yeah. Um, and you've got a right angle square, which I'll show you, which does it more accurately, but you can just use your hands if you wanted it. So it's fine for trees in detail, but if you're going to fix the corners of windows or something from chain and offset, you want to do it as best you can and obviously try and get that 90 degree angle on it 
All right. That's zero on that. Some of the types aren't zero. <laughs> uh, which manual did I go to? This one or this one? That one. So a distance on that to approximately the centre. You've got a bush in the way, so it's a little bit twisted. Uh, yes, I banged another nail. 24, 4, 4. What do we have? 23, 5, 4. 23, 5, 4. Yeah. 23, 5, 4. Alright. So that's... Well, I would have said that was the centre there. Yeah. So 24, I don't know, maybe 4, 5. Yeah, you've definitely yeah. gone to the centre, haven't you? Yeah. It's not very straight, you'll, you'll measure. Yeah, I know. So it would, be, it would measure longer then. Hmm. So if I've got less on that, you know, is that going to matter? Um, it probably will. You know, if I pull it really hard, but I don't know. Did you say you had 5, 4? 5, 4, so that's longer. All right. Am I reading the right number? <laughs> yes, you yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So that's that much out. But again, I'm assuming what the centre is off that on my computer and when I surveyed it, and because it was the grass was probably grown over quite a lot of it. All right. So that's within 100 mil, right? So it's not it's not great, but it's not critical, mm -hmm. because if if you were doing a design round here and that was going to get in the way, you had to know exactly where it was, then you'd take some other dimensions from other known points and fix it better. All right. Because what does STN stand for? Station. STN. Station. Yeah. Uh, station. Oh, so that's Station J. Yeah. And this, so this is Station J. Well, that's probably where I put my... Um, yeah, that might have been where I put my GPS over it then. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's not... If I wanted it properly, I would punch mark the centre of it so I can relate to the same point every time. But at the moment, it's, is it in the middle somewhere? Yeah. All right. So we'll leave that pulled out there. I'll put a couple of ranging poles on it. And then I'll show you how this um, right angle square works. All right. Yeah, whoops. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, how many different measurements can you have for a particular piece of land, and which one do you have? Well, it de this is where it goes back to scale, accuracy, and what's the intentions, what's the survey for, and yeah. what detail are you looking at? Manholes are much more important than flower beds mm. or small trees, uh, and even a large tree, because you can't es estimate the centre of the large tree unless you take lots of dimensions around the outside of it. So it's going to be plus or minus 100 mil. Mm. So when you do, when you've got your design coming up, there's going to be critical bits that are set distances. So far off that boundary, so far down at the ground, so far there. Because you want to set, you've got one meter, um, let's say uh, slabs uh, that are very expensive and you don't want to cut any. So you'd come out a set number to here. Well, that is quite critical. So you need to make sure nothing's in the way from that. And if it is, you need to measure it to make sure it's where it says it is. Otherwise, it's going to impact on that design. So it depends on the detail. This survey was, was plotted at 1 to 100 scale. So as I said, as long as stuff are plus or minus 30 mil, it's acceptable to what your, dry, your drawing accuracies are. So plus or minus 30 mils. If I go one way, 30 mil, and another way, 30 mil, it's 60 mil is the overall that would be allowed. 
you don't allow it in everything, but you allow it in things that maybe are not so important. Mm. All right, so it's down to scale, what's the job for, and what's the detail you're looking at. So, because you'll get no nothing will be perfect in this world, because this type might measure slightly different to another kind of type, all right? But I presume that if you're a designer and you choose to use your own measurements rather than the survey measurements, yes, then you're of taking course. on the kind of liability for those measurements. Well, again, it depends if it's within the tolerance, the drawing tolerance. So, one so to five, if one. If there is a problem because of your measurements, then it's actually in the end your responsibility. I well, if you, if, as I say, you're plotting at one to a hundred and it's within 20, 30 mil, you haven't got a problem. If it's within two or three hundred mil, then you have. So, you then need to talk to the survey company or the surveyor and say, I've got 300, I measure 300 mil different to yeah, what yeah. you've got. They're I'm assuming to, I'm right. Trying to agree the, agree the measurements. Well, you're trying to find out who's right and who's wrong. It should be better, you know, one hundred scale, it should be better than 300 mil. Okay, so, yes, that's what I'm saying about you. You need confidence in the survey company. So, a bigger company that's going with more resources, better equipment, better training the staff should provide a better survey, but it's not always the case. So, from you, from a designer point of view, you need to validate that, as you say. And the validating that is taking some overall dimensions and check dimensions like we're doing here to make sure is it within a reasonable tolerance that I can work with. You know, if it's wrong everywhere, then throw it back at them and say, this is no good, do it again. Mm -hmm. So it should be, because the modern kit effectively, you just set it up over here, you press a button and it tells you where you are. You know, the stuff that we are doing now is much more hands-on, is much more care. You know, you just look at the wind now, it's blowing all these tapes all over the place. There's something in the way with this, it's not giving me the correct distance. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would need to evaluate, is this wrong, or is my tape wrong, or is the start point wrong? You know, and narrow it down, but if it doesn't matter, don't let it worry you. You know, you're going on to the stuff that's important. Mm -hmm. Okay? And buildings, in your boundaries, and probably your levels are more important than anything. Because that's where you're going to, it might cost you in materials coming in and out and on the restrictions you've got between your neighbours, your building, what other features are in the garden and the boundaries. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah? Okay, so um, as I say, I'll put up these poles and I'll show you this right angle square. And that's quite useful if you've got stuff that's far away and it's, it's not a, you're not able to put triangle, trilateration on it. You know, it's difficult to get a triangle right to fix that point. And the easiest and quicker way is to do it by right angle chain and offset. All right? Yeah? And if, anybody else? Can I ask a silly yeah. question about triangles? Do they have to be equilateral triangles? No. no, not at all. As long as you get three, the three sides measured. And as I said, to that window, it measured along five metres, then 15 metres, and whatever the distance was. And I've got three. And that's the only shape. It can't be anywhere else. It could be the other side because it's nothing to tell you which side of that line the other two dimensions are. But once you build up and you've come from that to somewhere else, there's only one possibility that that triangle's going to be. So the triangle method is better, but as you can see here, there is going to be things in the way, obstacles, it's going to be up and down round, it's going to be round bushes, over bushes, um, there's going to be things in the way of materials, buildings, whatever. So you need a combination of a chain and offset, trilateration, and um, which I'll show you in the new year, using a level three here stadia, which you can see over things, and you can still get a distance to a mil to a hundred mil, and from a piece of kit like a simple level and stuff, it can get you out of these type of problems. All right. Let me bang in these these ranging poles, and I'll show you this. Over here and then the yeah. And assuming you've put those in, like where would those points of measure come from? Are they like certain distance? So it's like um, horizontal to the house. No, no. I've they're just, just like starting. It's just your starting line. Yeah. Right I mean, there. I could have got away with one nail here, yeah. which would have superseded that one and that yeah. one, and put another peg in the grass over there to see around the back okay. of there, and okay. then go down that way. 
Okay. So I put a number of them in because I wanted to, I wanted to survey it with GPS, survey it with normal methods, yeah. survey it so that there was lots of people coming in out here with buggies and everything yeah. they weren't getting in my way you know yeah, if i had one yeah, there yeah, yeah. so but i can move there and do stuff yeah to yeah but once okay. they are fixed they're fixed and i that can add to them okay um but if i lose them i should have other ones that i can reinstate okay. from it okay interesting all right. all right right so these are optical squares have a look at one well you You turn the bit round and you've got three prisms. So if you look through the middle one, that's straight ahead. The one at the bottom is to the left and the one at the top is to the right. And it'll give you an exact right angle. All right, so you can build up a square and things like that. Have a look. And I'll show you, I'll, if somebody could hold that tape in the middle of that manhole, I'll bang in these, pet, these um, things. Yeah, just pull it tight in the middle of the manhole. Yeah, so give it a flick. Yeah. <laughs> Good attempt. Yeah, I want it quite tight. Good attempt. Good attempt. So, so, so what we got to do is we, yeah, flick it about and then hold it. And if you put your foot on it there, just in the middle on the tape, that's it. Lovely. Oh Keeps God. it tight. Sorry that you have to worry That's it. Right, on one of the plans, I've got a dimension along here before it go 90 degrees. Right, there's a dimension along there, then it goes out 90 degrees. No, that's all right. So it's along here, probably about 12 metres, 12 and a half, 12 something. What distance have we got? 12.25. 12.25. So if I push that in there, right, and then I'll put one over the end of that. Fine now for that. Thank you all. You're welcome. Just maybe don't ask me to do anything. You did it grand. Right, so that little thing now. I think uh, Louis has so it. Here. Yeah, that's it. It's called a double double prism right angle square. All right. So if I sit that in the top of that, excuse me, and if I look, I can see that pole, and I can see that pole, and if I look at the mirror, it's it's probably to the there's a there's a door inside the window. So if you line up that way and that way and go that way i'll show you where the line's actually going you need to get out of the way so you can see it right so look in no i'm going to do it again so if you move it back and forward a bit slightly you should be able to see that pole at the top the other pole at the bottom and then if you line them up so if you square yourself oh, yeah, yeah, I can see it. yeah <laughs> then what you would say is i've got my poles lined up this way what is directly on line there and it can give you an exact 90 degrees. So if you just move it slowly back and forward, oh, it's turned round, yeah, that's it. Oh, a so you're looking through the bottom one to see the right hand pole, then the top one, so move your head up and down as well. Somebody's moved in the way, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, so you should line these two up, so you move it slightly back and forward, move your head up to it, both in line. When you've got them both in line in the top and the bottom, whatever would be in line in the centre of the middle one, the yellow one, would be exactly right angle. Yeah, it's, it's actually the edge of the window inside, I think. Yeah? No, but what I'm showing is the idea. Okay, okay. So you need to slowly move it back and forward, move your head up and down. 
because you'll see one pole one side oh, and then you want to move your head so you can see the other pole in the top and the bottom and then you would line them up to what you're looking at straight ahead. I get that. You get that? Yeah. It's quite handy and for 40 quid it can help you. Yeah. When you first look at it, it's kind of weird. You yeah. can't believe it's over there or over there. Yeah. So you need something to line up to give you the baseline, effectively, so you can come off of that. Basically, yeah. Left, right, and in the middle. It is cool. Do you want to keep that? Yeah. And considering for a sort of simple bit of thing. How much are these? About 40 quid. If you go through yacht service supplies, I think they do them 80 quid. And that's, they get them from China, same bit. But it's nice to have in your pocket. So for us, what I'm surmising is what will be useful is to have one of these, a long tape, and then that yellow thing that was about two hundred pounds. Was it two hundred pounds? What the level? The level. Yes. Yeah. Was Which I'll show you in the new year, yeah. Yeah. Are those three They're there the three other things you could do enough a lot. No, they could do enough a lot with that and you could probably and one of these poles. Uh, you can get ranging poles, they're probably five, ten pounds or something, so you can get a couple of them. Because you can lay out two poles. So again, if you get a survey and you want to check it, and you've got a nice wall, you can stand up against the wall, use your right angle square, and you can up and down and fix things that are on right I'm 90 degrees, then check it to the drawing. Kit would be really useful. Is that the basic kit? Well, I wouldn't rush out and get it, but no, see what it's no, like. We're not, going to get it. <laughs> not for at least a year. But no, this but it'll give you an idea. Well, you'll be amazed at the level because the level can give you the distances. Yeah. So it can give you an that's angle and distances. It's quite clever. Yeah. But you do need a little bit of background information for you to make sure you know what it is and what you're looking at. Yeah. And do you teach us how to Oh, yeah. 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 And right angle squares? You've got. It's a double prism right angle double square. Prism. <laughs> double prism right angle square. Yeah. And the other thing, if you get up in bumpy sites, is a... Uh, I'll show you. <laughs> I can't remember the name. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you need to move out the way. Uh, three windows. Yeah. yeah. One, so one's looking that way, one's looking that way. <laughs> 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 you can see them on top of each other. So this is the other, this is an abney. So if you get sights that are up and down, you can We're use an abney level. Then what you do is look at the object and you can adjust it. So you get your bubble, there's a little yeah. bubble in it. And that gives you the angle. So you know how sloping something is. Uh -huh. And if you measure up there 20 meters, you can use that angle by to Pythagoras to give you the the, the, the horizontal uh -huh. distance. Uh -huh. Yeah, and they're about 120 quid. But again, very useful piece of kit to have. Yeah. Well, it would save you fiddling about with this, and it'll save you any knowledge. But you might get onto a site that's quite small that you need to you need to use all this kit, mm. yeah. or certainly a tape anyway, minimum, that you can take triangulation, uh, trilateration everywhere and chain and offset. And once you got that, then you think, how am I going to level it? Yeah. Although to get a survey come in, company to come in and just do levels, A, they wouldn't really enjoy it, so they're better off trying to find a one-man band. But again, for the sake of a couple hundred quid, I'm going to show you next year how to do that. And I think with a little bit of practice, you could do that as well. Okay. So your quid's in. So, so what it is, is this... this it's the skills and the knowledge of things like this, the double prism, right angle square, how we measure things that help you to determine whether a survey is good or not, but also take it on board if you come up with a little site and feel confident. Yeah? Because you can never have enough dimensions. This is called, a, this is called an abney level. So what you do is you look through there and you get the bubble to go in the middle, if you look through it, and that'll tell you what the angle of inclination is. Ah, okay. So if you're going up the slope, you well, you know that you're 1.2 yeah. meters something. So, I can be like so if you're going to sight something up a hill, you want it the same height so you get a parallel line of sight, yeah? Because yeah. if you sight something at the bottom, when you pull the tape, you're not actually getting that true angle, are you? Yeah, yeah. And it only comes into play 
at a certain angle anyway, but you're better doing it properly, yeah. and then you know where you are. Nice. Yeah, so you got to move this little thing to get the bubble. Oh, yeah, I saw the bubble go up. Yeah, but you've got to get it in the middle of the two lines. Yes. All right, so you'd hold it steady or yeah, on top of a rod. It. Yeah, but I get the principle of it. Yeah, and then use and then the bubble to get it up. <laughs> and it'll tell you the inclination. <laughs> and you can get other forms of this as well. Have you heard of, um, is it Mosher? M O E S U R E? Oh, I've seen those things. They yeah. Look, yeah. So my husband's company are thinking of buying one. Um, and I was like, oh, do you think it'd be any good? So basically, how do you describe it? So you, you can walk you, around, don't you? Yeah, you yeah. walk around with it, but it is linked to your phone. Oh, so right. It gives you the measurements, the inclinations. The, wow. Um, so for, for, for the likes of a garden designer who maybe doesn't want to do a full, full survey, survey, but actually mm. needs to, you know, he's on his Well, own that would be to great to give you a good idea of the whole lot but then I would still recommend that you yeah, check to, stuff to see how good it is. Oh blimey yeah. Decide, well I've seen out. people using the phones and just taking the whole thing of phot photographs and then you can stitch them together to give you a 3D yeah, image of the plant. Like, yeah, so you actually that, hold it and walk about? So you walk about with it, um, I'm hoping it might be in a thingy next week. Um, and it's Lovely, thanks. Called, uh, is it Moja? Moja, Moja, wow. And you, you go. And that's how oh, it's like a little GPS kit then. Yeah. A scanner or yeah. something. And it reads, so you go round, you can get, you can hold it all attach it to the arm. Does it say whether it's GPS or the world's first motion based measuring tool? Okay. I'm just, when I think of that, I think, all right, I'll move forward, but what's it relating to where I was previously? So it needs to know that I suppose you press start. Yeah, you start And then it must, it. it must use either magnetism yeah. or satellites to know where you're going. No, I'd be interested but that to know whether you think it would work, be worth you know, And what's the cost it's like? Mosier. Yeah. And what's the cost? Oh, about 300. That's pretty good, jolly good. It's been putting me out of business, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so if I, um, so you were talking about day rates. This is a, an abney level. So you look at the inclination, you look through there and you, light, you get the bubble to move down and then read off the angle and that tells you the inclination. Sorry. So you're talking about day rates. Um, yeah. Obviously it's completely dependent on the site, but for example, this site, how many days would it take to survey? Um, well, I tried to do, when I came out to do this for the students, I set up my scanner. I told them, I gave them a couple of three baselines to do chain and offset. Um, and again, it was 30 students wandering about here. Then I set up my instrument and it was like flies around, do you know what's because what's this, what's that, why did you put that in there? And I couldn't do it. So the scanner was still playing away. So I moved the scanner to two or three other points while I did it and I had no chance. So I came back the next day and I probably survived the majority of it in three quarters of a day, yeah, okay. half a day, three quarters of a day. But then my scanner screwed up because I ran out at light and it couldn't determine where it was. So I had to redo that. Um, and then again, as I say, I come back and I checked it and added bits to it. So if I was, you know, getting this a commercial project, I'm yeah. getting this site survey. Well, there's not a lot of like detail. Two, two days of surveying? I would say if somebody wanted to charge you more than 12.50, Fifteen hundred pounds for this with yeah. contours, yeah. which is an extra charge because I've got to do the digital model. Then I would query it. Okay. But that you might get somebody for seven or eight hundred quid because there ain't a lot of detail. So what they've got to do is get that wall, which is behind all the trees. They're going to survey the edge of the the um, grass. It depends if you want them to do all the bushes, you know, and all the individual yeah. plants. Then it'll take the time. So it's not down to time. But there's a little bit of bitty in there where the walls change. Um, and then how, where does the end of the wall go that way, you know, and you've got stuff on here. So there's not masses to it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I would say a day, two max. Um, but you can get a day and a scanner, somebody would scan it. And as I said, I did it and you can look at the scan. So I've got all this scanned and if you go into, I think it's Q to go or something, scan to go on the portal on your web things. And you click it on, you can use it for Mac or you can use it for a PC. And you just double click it and then it shows you which views you can look at and you can then take out measurements along the window the door height and the whole lot it's really quite clever um, but they're just photographic images with lots of dots on it which was the point cloud and what i did then was take these cuts through it and then drop the line work and on the 
Cambridge Cottage draw in the PDF, you can actually switch on my GPS and you can see how close I got to the line work from my actual savine. It's within that much, so it's pretty good. So I was trying to show all different methods and certainly one of the um, one of the drawings I've got, which is part of the videos, was I showed how to do chaining offset or taping offset, how to do trilateration, how to do um, proper survey with, a, with an instrument, um, and three hair stereo, which I'm going to show you next, next week with simple level how to do it, and put them all together and interrogated the results. And the results weren't bad at all. So I was proven that you can come up with a pretty good survey with not a lot of outlay, shall we say, and money-wise. Um, and it's just a bit of care, keeping neat sketches, thinking about what you're doing and making sure your tape is pulled out and not too wibbly and not going over too many bumps. Using a navney level, if need be, if it's, if it's up and down, so you can calculate the slope distance against the horizontal. And that's what you do with that, with Pythagoras. So, yeah. So you just point it up and then you, you use the little dial to get the bubble in between the two lines and then that will tell you what the angle is. It, sorry? Oh, it is sensitive, yes. Yeah. So I would use it on top of a ranging pole so at least you can keep it steady. And as your man said, you would need to have, whatever height you are, you need to be sighting the same height up the hill so that you get that parallel. And then you can work out what the angle is and you can use simple trigonometry to work out what it is, what the distance is. <laughs> yeah, but it is. But as long as you, s it's the angle against. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Can I trick calculators online? The um, <laughs> free motion. Sensors, accelerometers, and gyros. gyros. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it does. Gyro <laughs> I, yeah, I use gyroscopes. They use the gyroscopes an awful lot for finding oil, so they can okay. drill down, and the gyroscope okay. tells the way to go. In, and you use them in tunnel, and because it works on where is north, it okay. works on magnetism. Okay. Uh, accelerometers, how fast you move, uh -huh. and sensors is it's it's probably looking. It might have a bunch of cameras on it or videos. It's looking at what the detail was. So if it right. recognizes that plant, and you go forward, it'll recognize the right. plant. So it's a combination of things. Okay. But it looks pretty good. So it's giving you X, Y, and Z. Yeah, and then well. you can download it into your chosen well. CAD software. That looks pretty good. It's just been advertising. And my, and my husband was, because he's an estate agent, and it's, you know, there's always a quibble about what the size of the garden is. Yeah. And, and you know, the owner obviously says it's always bigger than it actually is. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they were looking at it, and I was like, hmm. So anyway, I was just in, I well, was it, interested to know what you thought, whether it was a I've never come across it. Um, but yeah, it'd be interested to see what proper surveys think about it. So yeah. we think about it. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, for preliminary stuff to... Yes, I think they're doing it for sort of... Um, uh, landscaping, decking, fence. So anybody that's going to go into yes. a garden, yeah. not for a full, not to yeah. replace what you're doing, but for that initial. No. Well, I've got, I've got on one of my videos. I've got what it used to be a wheelie, and you used to roll up that, yes. and he'll give you this. It, it almost looks like yeah. a digital version. Now of that, that I thought was quite good because you used it in Ireland for doing road cross sections, yeah. and I said it should come up with 20 meters. It was 19.1, so it was basically rubbish. Yeah. Um, to lose that much over 20 yeah. metres. Now, I thought you could adjust it, and I did talk to somebody who said, can you just, this is now basically you got shot away, and that was three or 400 quid. Mm. Um, but how it's going to adjustment, I don't know. You can get digital ones. This is a analogue one. this just talks to the sky, and then... Yeah. Well, that's quite good if it's using GPS or fix, because the GPS fix, even with your phone, you can get it probably five, 10 metres. Yeah. So yeah. if it's using GPS, motion, yeah. Uh, and the gyros, then it's brought as soon as it's reducing it's, that error. Yeah. Down, yeah it? That's quite good. Mm. I'm okay. impressed. My, everybody's taking. What are they taking all photos of it all for? Oh, yes. So you got it all online, though. It's all online, is it? Well, yeah, as I said, the scan thing, if you go to Q Scan to Go and, and follow the instructions, that you see pictures that you can move out, you can move in, you can go from different things. I think it's Q Scan to Go. It's, in, it's, it's a folder. Within your, um, I'll, when we go back to the office, I'll yeah. confirm it. But yeah, it's in there. Okay. And I said, you got one for a, a, a batch file, a BAT file for either PC or for a Mac. Okay. And you zoom in it, and then you look at the, the ground and you pick a scan position and it shows you what I was looking at. And you go round 360 degrees, said okay. you can take dimensions, you can look at it. And it's quite good. Okay. But that's from an £80,000 scanner, though. So. <laughs> Which again is down to 
It's a couple of mil, two or three mil, whereas that's what you're paying yeah. the money for that. But, but again, say, technology is bringing it forward. Yeah, and I guess for the, sort of the likes of us, we want to have a good idea. And maybe the tape, if you're on your own and the tape measure, yeah. and that can be quite tricky, then this could be the answer to give you oh, that yeah. initial... Yes. To work As, from the initial plan. Yeah, if you wander about here for the edges of your, oh, yeah. your yeah. Uh, footpath and uh, grass, I don't know about you, no, I don't, but you could hold up against the bit. But again, you can just pull your tape along and measure off, yeah. and then you can take a measurement yeah. from there to that wall, yeah. and then the width of the road a couple of times, and then the height of that hedge, and then from that hedge to that wall, you've pulled it all together. You're starting to get it tight, um, and you know within within a couple of three hours, you could take a bunch of levels uh, uh, measurements everywhere. Along with that, you've ended up with quite a good plan to base and, and a load of photographs. Yeah. Um, and it's just using what's around you really to make use of it. No, <laughs> you've got to adjust. You've got to adjust the little thing. Let me hold this, yep. and you're going to adjust. You're going to look through something. Yeah. Say the height of the building. Okay. So line up the height of the building, and then you use the the dial to get the bubble in the middle of the two red lines, and then that will tell you the inclination. So I'll use the, the little crosshairs. So that, the crosshairs like that to look at the top, top yeah. yeah. As steady as you can. It wibbles about a bit. Then use the dial. <laughs> yeah, so you can use it for heights of trees. You can use it for anything. He knows my distance. I know my distance from here to the building. So you would measure, you'd measure from where you are to the building. Yeah. That gives you the inclination. Yeah. Use Pythagoras, yeah. the angle, angle times the whatever. And um, it will give you the horizontal, the, the slope distance. That's a uh, abney level. Abney, A B N E Y. Um, but it's also a clinometer. It's the same thing. Yeah, you can either if you've got the horizontal your slope distance, you can you can get the horizontal. If you've got the horizontal, yes, yeah, one or the other. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, see? And then you can teach everyone else. Yeah, and me. Proper maths. Back in the day. But they're useful little bits of yeah, kit. Yeah, you know, this, a few tapes, right angle square on a level, you could yeah. do a lot of damage. Yeah. Really. A lot of damage, Jimmy, off to the board. Um, <laughs> well, you were mentioned, you were talking about an app that you could take. Yes. Yes. Um, in your folder, right? All right. It's, it's Q Scan to Go. Q Gardens. Q Scan to Go. And it's it's my data that I use to scan this. It's my data. I use it. I was using a Faro uh, X3D, I think it was. It's, it was about sixty thousand pounds worth of scanner. But it's accurate to a few millimetre. Yeah. So I scanned everything, yeah. got the point cloud, then took chop, chop lines through it so I could trace the dots, yeah. and then traced the walls and the edge of the building, yeah. and actually formed a circle round it to see how good the scan data was. It was all remarkably good. But you can switch off and on the layer on the PDF file of this survey, and it'll show you the scan data. Yeah. But if you go on Q to go, you actually see the scan data and you're looking at 360, you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can go to the next scan and you can interrogate the building for dimensions and everything. And it might even show you where the plants are. So you can see what's the distance from me at that plant and it'll give you it. So, Brilliant. Yeah. Awesome. Do you ever use these remotes with a larger... Laser, yeah, I've got one in the back. Trouble is with them is it's fine for short distances, but once you get long distance, you can't see the laser dot. So it's up to 10 meters or...? But that, that, I'll show you. This. Yeah. That's right. You can check. Yeah. That's right, and find out what it's like. Maybe I can do from the hedge. The hedge is sticking out. So if I was taking it from the back of here. Yeah. I can't see the, d the dot on the building, but I've got 8.162 metres from here to there. Okay, you can't see the dot because... Because it's so small. Um, yeah, there it's on your coat. Oh yeah, no, that's it. All right. right. So I've got 5.17 to you. But um, this good, but this has got... A level. Well. No, it's got a sight thing. You can actually look through there. Ah. 
You have a look and see it. Mine is much more basic. Do you see the little crosshairs? Uh, I can see the, the wall. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So it would give you an idea, but again, if there's other things in the way, <laughs> and you just press the button, yeah. Uh, I can see now. You can see the, the dot. little dot. Yeah? Yeah. Just because you told me there was a dot. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's useful in that sense because you finally see the dot. <laughs> so probably that's the aim. Do you know, okay. um, I never bother. I just try and go like this and see it physically. But for instance, you can do from that wall to that wall in a very easy way. That's right. And it saves you getting out of the tapes. So you can right. build it all up. Because if you go from there to there and go into there, you fix that shape. So you now can measure out from the corner to heat to that manhole's yeah. corner and measure out there to there and you've got another triangle and then you go from that to there to something else you're building up all these triangles yeah you know that it's very accurate yeah, yeah yeah of course but just to check because i'm yeah. never gonna do a survey myself but but you might yeah but you try. need to check things don't you, you as you say you have a, the plan uh, from the previous you know yeah garden. and you need to verify it and yeah. you verify that the garden layout is correct yeah. Maybe that's right the client has already a layout yeah. Yeah, but you need to verify, you need to give yourself confidence yeah. that what you've got to base your design on is good. Yeah, yeah I'll show these people this. Um, uh, Distal. Yeah. Um, and it's got help, you've got a little dot in there that we actually could see the dot. I thought, because it's, um, I can't see the dot. But I got my distance. Okay. But if you look through there, you can actually see the little dot and then press the button, it gives you the distance. It's helpful. So, but will it take, so when you're pointing it, obviously you don't know where the dot's landing. No, because it's too small. It's too, it's too small. So how do you know where? Maybe another that's person stays from. there. And maybe see it. That's what I've done in the past right. when I've been checking Someone things. There so, you can see the dot. so I've got them in a white bit of paper and I've moved it about to get the dot and they say, yeah, okay. I can see the dot and press the button. Okay. But <laughs> looking yeah. through this, yeah. It's a bit easier. If you look through there and press the button on there, you can see the dot. <laughs> because we use this a lot for indoors, yes, yeah, yeah, laser. So we just take indoors measurements of rooms and all that, so it's very quick. Did you see Ross's app that he was using to create a LiDAR model? No, is that what he was doing? Ross. You've done it. Yeah. So just wow, and so that's it. what you're doing. Wow. Yeah. Right, so if you go into my Q scan to go, you'll see that. Um, and it, I mean, mine's is down a few millimetres, but that's very, very good. It should be quite, should be quite good and quite, and, you know, you can arbitrarily, this LiDAR. LiDAR. Yeah. Is the app called LiDAR? No, so this is a thing called Polygon. Um, I don't know quite how I'll need to get it into. And can you output it for CAD, DXF, yeah. or anything? Yeah. So, yeah. so you can, you can, you'd have to really mess about with it, I think. To and get. is that video or still photography? So it's it's taking pictures at the same time as putting out a lidar cloud. So it's basically bouncing loads of lasers around and then reading those back, and then it's taking the photo and mapping those on top of the point cloud. Which is similar what a laser does, and similar to so you. I mean, so a combination of that and that. Yeah. Um, and a tape, maybe one of these, you can get a lot done. We were to say 0.53, one of those window panes. What, distance between it? Yeah. Just incredibly rough, but hang on. I can get in more detail. So the glass itself, yeah, 0.54. 136? Point from there to there. Oh. Maybe not this actual pane, but. Oh. Or is it like dots and that side? Or we could say the. Which one are we on? Oh no! It has. No! <laughs> so what yeah, good? use that. Yeah. What are we on the with it? <laughs> Let's do. Back this. to the real method. Hang on. Let's go from that. That's pretty good. Crossbar to that one. Do it much better on a. I mean, even if we just to, you know, measure this. 1.3? Yeah, I mean, that's saying 1.2, but again, I could probably, I could get right in there and... Wow. 
I said one. Yeah, it's got yeah. certainly something to give you a good idea. And if you can get that into... And that's just me wondering yeah. about that, if you were to properly grid it out. Yeah, so it. if you get that into DXF to get yeah. it into your SketchUp, really you could really use cool. it as a base pan. I mean, the challenge with this would be, called? this is Polygon, Polycam, sorry. Polycam. Polycam. How much is it free or does it's it cost? It's a subscription, of course. Yeah. It's about 40 quid a year, I think. That's not bad. Um, but it's it's quite new, but it's, uh, it's, it's getting quite better handy. with each release. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the better cameras and the better technology and the faster processors, you know, I as you the said... the challenge is then, is then processing this to get it into, yeah. into yeah. CAD, because this, yeah. this has got way too much geometry on it. Yeah, and you're going to have loads and loads of data. Yeah, um, and what, basically what you want to do is strip out half of it, just give you the basics. Mm. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we are much more simple <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> but again, you know, it just shows you, you know, batteries go stuffed, you've got to get out a type to measure it all. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Uh, Good. There we go. So it's this right. one here. Mm. There are lots. Yeah. It's not oh. right. poly polycam is the one that I've just. Okay. Mm. But I have not. I've looked, not looked into them. Okay. That's the only one I know of. Okay. I've used it for that. So you must have. So have you got another thing on your? So. So this has got lidar on it. Ah right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you wouldn't be able to get it with a yeah, normal exactly. camera. Yeah. No, yeah. but a lot of a lot of um, phones these days have got lidar. Yeah. 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 Is this Samsung or iPhone? No, it's an iPhone. Yeah. yeah. So the Pro Series have got um, LiDAR. I think the iPads have them. Some Android phones have got them now. Yeah, and draping the photography over the top of the <laughs> exactly. yeah. point cloud yeah, effectively yeah. is pretty yeah. good. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the next. Look, that's what I haven't looked into is, is then rationalizing that geometry down. So yeah, but again, something like that, what I would do is I would use that, but then take the some measurements. Yeah. Overall, so you can gauge it, and then just you could even scan round that, so digitize it again round so, the line what yeah. that you want. You could probably turn it into that. a plan. Yeah. And just yeah. At least you get your plan done quickly. And then yeah. You your and then you're away. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. interesting. I suspect it's probably going to take more time to save time. But <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the way like not. This where you're not on site, you can go around do a quick site, and then you can move yes. around the site and yeah. get some sense of space. And and I would imagine that for the cost, if you wanted something that's more accurate or going out output in yeah. different formats, they're going to want you to charge a little bit more money. Mm. And then you've, as you say, you've got to weigh up what's your office time to get that data into something that's usable. You just need it's to nice to look at and it's nice to take flow, dimension. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Interesting though. This is it. Yeah, mm. very interesting. I've learned a few things today. <laughs> I've got a little dot in it and my battery's going wrong. <laughs> All right, so... Basically, that is about this. So, pulling chains using right angle square, add me a level, chain and offset, trilateration, using what kit you can get round about you can help you get something base. And again, if you can get that, turn that into a line work drawing or something basic that you could then underpin in a survey if you get given by a company. So, before you even do lots of data yep. on it, you can easily prove that survey if you're happy with the quality of that, mm. whether the survey's up to standard. Yeah. But again, taking a few dimensions on site, next year we'll show you how to use a level and how we can take distances with that level. And that helps you because the leveling, I think, is something that's, I mean, th that says it's got level information, it's giving you difference in heights. And again, how good is that? I suppose so it depends how good that well is. Yeah. yeah. So it's taking it all, but looking at, but again, when you're getting down to design, you want pretty good levels. You want levels that you're confident with and something you can relate to. So when they come to set it out, they use the floor level. And I was talking about the plinth line. Round the corner here is a plinth line. Right. So the plinth line is covering over the DPC, which is basically the floor level. So if you get buildings that have got this all around it, that's a plinth line which is covering the top of that is more or less the damp proof course which was either slate, uh, plastic or um, uh, tarmac based material um, and they would do that to stop the damp going up the building but basically it's almost at the floor level so if you had a building with that all the way around you could come off that as your datum and then you could access it at any part of the building 
as long as there's not any changes in levels, then you can use that floor. So if you, if you were denied access when you came back in a month's time or something and wanted to just check a few levels over there, you can get the access round there for the datum and then check your fuel levels. But again, a surveyor should have put lots of nails in, which should have heights on them. And I've got heights on the drawings that you've got there. You can use that as a datum and it should be relative and relate to another datum and it should be the same. So the difference between that nail and the other nail should be correct on the plan and should actually physically correct it if you try and level it. All right. If you came to a site that were already nailed in, yeah. would you use those nails? If I was a surveyor and they were in the right place, yes. Mm. But I've been to sites where I'll stand in the corner and say, right, I can see that corner of the wall, I can see that, I can see around there. I'll bang in one here. So I'll bang it in a little bit like the dot on there. I don't think I bang it in, set my kit up, start working. I come back the next day and I've seen another two or three nails around about it that I could have used. <laughs> now, I don't know the coordinates of the nails, but if you're sending somebody new to the site, an assistant, he doesn't know which nail it was used. So we put paint or a bit of chalk around it to know which one it is. Yeah, <laughs> so it's just to identify it. But yeah, so surveyors will... You'd, it took me a wee while just to find that nail in the corner there, right? So if you go to a site that you went back five, six, seven years ago, and you said, I think it was here, you can build, you can take off what's called a witness diagram. And a witness diagram is the nail reference to the edge from there, the corner from there, and another point, so you can reinstate it, so you can find it. But we don't do witness diagrams for every station, and not all surveyors do it. So you're relying on your memory and coming back and looking at the detail. And you would say, there's a station around here somewhere, and you might find one that was not yours, it's somebody else's, because they've whipped yours out. Then you'll end up with errors in your drawing because your distances to the other stations won't add up. Um, but it is something that surveyors will do. They'll, they'll generally find a, a, a place, a common place, that they can see the detail, whack something in, and go to the next place. So you will get, not all the time, lots of nails, but you will get nails with paint around them or whatever, and the different styles. Um, and that's the survey control point, and that's where the survey's based on, as an origin. All right. Any other questions on anything? No? Can I yes? Ask about oh. Colourings, yeah. Yeah. So what is the key? For there is no key. It's just no, key. no. We had somebody who was colour blind, and he, we cha we had one set of colours that we used to do for trees, roadways, buildings, all the rest of it. And he was colour blind. It was another surveyor, and he said, "I can't." it's not clear to me, so can you change your top of kerb as one colour, the bottom of kerb is another colour, the building is another colour, and he gave us a series of colours. And we ended up changing all our work to have a colour coded thing that was quite nice to look at. And I don't know if you've, you've not done any stuff in Chesham Boise, this is one of the test sites, and the contours on that were yellow, so when you got the PDF in for you guys to try and do your design, you couldn't see the contours. So we generally do our contours, and this particular it's light grey and dark grey, but normally we use purple and blue, um, so you can see them. And when they come out in a PDF like this, you can actually still see them. But the, the colours are not, you try and be consistent with your colours, so services are usually blue, because yeah, services are re related to water, you know, whether it's a stop cot, stop tap, manholes, gullies, things like that, so they're generally blue. Trees and bushes and that are generally green, so therefore we use green and buildings will use red, and stations, uh, I've just used a very sort of light colour, well, yellowy, off yellow colour. Uh, walls and things like that, they can be red. Away. So there is no consistency, but for a company, they will have whatever they're going to use. But you will find that some of them will just be nothing. Um, and then it's quite, high. so if they've got black and white, which I think some of these big copies have been taken as black and white, it's quite hard to differentiate what's going on. So, but colours don't, they might translate quite well on a piece of paper that's been printed, but when you're looking at a CAD, depending on a white background or a black background, depends on how easy it is them to see. Because some people prefer a back, black background when they're doing CAD, and some people like paper, a white background. And it depends what colours stand out, and it depends what colours they use for their layers. And then it depends what colour gets transferred as a DXF, DWG, PDFs, um, and what have you. So there's no hard and fast rules. 
Um, but they should be fairly similar between companies. For Cambridge Cottage, yeah. our next project where we do a design sketch, do we get a digital copy of this? I've got the DXF, the PDF, the DWG, um, all in there, all in the student thing, so you can just pull it straight out. All right. SketchUp model? Sorry? <laughs> yeah, well, well, SketchUp yeah. model. You can pull it in. You can pull it in. Oh, the DXF. Yeah. Yeah, you can pull it, but we're all going to do it. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. yeah, but so put it back in. So whoever does it first, put it back in, the other ones can do that. You can, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking. Yeah, no, it's just that you did mention as well the photographic survey. Yes, yeah, so that's very similar to Imania, this, you yeah. know, his scan data. And that's in scan to go, Q scan to go, I think it is. I said, I'll verify when I get back. Yeah. But that's quite useful because that is the whole thing I've scanned. Um, and it's accurate because I've traced round the line work and then put it on top of that survey to see how good it is. Um, and that was based on control and GPS to fix it and get all the scans all knitted together, which is basically what you were doing by walking yeah. about. But we are doing it in a much more scientific way, so we're not relying on satellites or anything. We're sort of doing it on the ground. Is it your or um, no, don't think so. No. <laughs> right. Um, so unless there's about anything else, um, that is about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But have a wee look. Have a wee look at the videos for the rotating laser, the chain and offset, trilateration, and just see how I've gone about doing things. Uh, because it helps. You know, you've had a little bit of this. It'll help you. Um, and as I say, the notes all help as well. But but stuff like this and that other bit of software. Uh, may change it all and make life a lot easier, but you still never get away from a physical dimension that's quite nice to prove it. All right. And those are the videos that you, you showed us on Facebook? Yes. Yeah. 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 They were loaded up yeah, over the weekend. Yeah. And I tried to get rid of the background noise where the wind was terrible. So hopefully they're a little bit better, but at least they give you a flavour. Uh, and I screw up in a couple of things as well, which is helpful because it means things. Hey. We won't notice. Well, you will. <laughs> Believe me, you will. All right. I dropped this before. I hope I didn't break it. it should be all right. Let me know. Huh? Oh, that, that's all right. Really? Well, as long as it turns round, yeah. Well, I nearly <laughs> dropped it myself. I'm really sorry. That's all right. No? It's yeah, okay. it's fine. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank All right. You. Thank you. Thank you. Take it, please. Thank you. <laughs> I don't have a PI yet. Yeah, All you. right. Yeah, great. Yeah, Cheers, thank, you. thank you. Yeah, you, you'll enjoy the leveling one next year as well because that's quite. It makes you think about things, but not a lot of expert. Um, not a lot of outlay, but yet quite a useful piece of kit. Yeah, right. I was filled with people who were coming into the because we were all sitting there like. Zombies, you know, but it's just because we're taking all the information in, you know, we do, so it's a lot to sort of process. But yeah, hopefully, yeah, but hopefully it's a little bit snapshot yeah. that you yeah. recall things yeah, that then you can find out about. Yeah, it was good. Thank you. All right, it's just a shame about the online students. I don't know, I was saying earlier they should maybe get some come in at the beginning for every person who let and sort of make set that all up, you know, because if it was me, I wouldn't know what to do. So. No, and it's quite hard, to, as I say, to do, um, you know, the Zoom trying to focus on yeah. how they listen to you. If it works, it's all great, but yeah. if it doesn't. Well, because yeah, I've so because I've done it for the last two or three years, they've got old stuff that you can let them know. But it'd be worthwhile to. Um, I'm going to try and copy this and uh, publish this as well. But but if you can let them all know that um, there is the old versions that they can go and have a look yeah, exactly. at. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, we'll do. Yeah, thank you very all much. All right. Cheers, cheers now. Bye bye. Oh, what's happening? It's all getting.